Ladies and gentlemen of Carrier Strike Group 1, we're going to be going over a simple radio tutorial today, and uh, we'll include the download, install, uh, initial setup, as well as a couple troubleshooting steps. So let's get to it. First things first, if you haven't already downloaded it, please go find it on the internet, download it. This time the version is 1.5.2.0. You can just click on uh, this right here on their GitHub, and that'll download it for you. I've already got a version downloaded, so we'll go directly into setup. I've got mine in my downloads folder right now. You're going to want to unzip that. I'm just going to put, keep, put it straight in my downloads folder. Now this is a pretty critical uh, step and uh, very important for uh, a lot of issues that could spring up later. In here you're going to find an installer. You're also going to find a couple EXEs. You're going to find the Simple Radio Client EXE and the Simple Radio Server EXE. Both of these will open up Simple Radio Program. And if you've never sold it Simple Radio before, Simple Radio will not work. And it can be very, very frustrating because it looks like it's installed. You just unzipped it and the program runs, but nothing works. Do not use these EXEs. I don't know why. I'm sure there's a good reason that they exist. Don't use them. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run the installer. Installer is going to pop up and it's going to ask you two questions. It's going to ask you where do you want to install this to and where is your saved games folder, not DCS. That being said, if you have uh, multiple user files that have multiple saved games folders uh, on your computer, make sure it is the saved games folder that uh, the DCS um, profiles are in. Um, but other than that, it's just the root saved games folder. Uh, you're going to click locate and browse to where they're at on your computer. This already shows mine set up. Then you're simply going to hit Update Install to DCS. And it'll tell you, congratulations, you've installed it successfully. You are on the road to enjoying Simple Radio. Now, another important part, you have this folder right here. It's got the installer. It's where you unzipped DCS to. You've got Simple DCS, Simple Radio, Client Radio, and SRS Server. Both of these will open up SRS. Here, let's look at it. we have what appears to be a functioning SRS. Some people are able to make this work. I'm telling you, do not use this. Here's what I will show you what you should do with this. You should delete it, get rid of it. There's another folder that you're going to be running as Simple Radio 3. From a point, delete the folder that you unzipped it to. Delete the download. If it seems like I'm beating this dead horse, it's because this is the most common step that I have when I help people troubleshoot, and it's the bane of a couple of people's existences. So make sure that you do not use that folder to run SRS through. What you are going to do is go find on your programs folder wherever you just uh, installed it. and found it. It's titled DCS-SimpleRadio-Standalone by default. You're going to open up that. And below and behold, this looks very, very familiar to that unzipped folder. This is another reason why it's so frustrating, is because this looks very, very similar in, in file structure. What you're going to want to do is you're going to find this SR-Client Radio. That's for you, the client. You're going to create a shortcut, which I've already done here. And you're going to take that shortcut and you're going to go put it on your desktop or put it in a folder where you launch DCS from wherever you, however you manage your computer. You're going to go put that uh, in a, a comfortable spot for you to launch Simple Radio. And then you're going to launch Simple Radio. Here's what it looks like. It looks the same as when we ran it out of that unzip folder, but this one should be uh, much more functional than the last one. Now, uh, before you connect to anything or uh, set up your controls, you're going to set up your microphone first. Make sure that the microphone is actually set to the microphone that you intend to use while you're playing DCS. Make sure that your speakers here, this drop-down menu, is actually set to the speakers that you want to be using, whether that your desktop speakers or a headset. And then this optional mic output. Right now it says no mic output slash pass-through. If you turn this on to a speakers, uh, everything that you say uh, and everything that, uh, really everything that you say or that your microphone pickups will be repeated back out through that. I don't like that. Uh, I doubt that you want it, so make sure it says no mic output. 
Then below here we have a, uh, a non-favorited way to enter in a simple radio IP as well as a drop-down menu of any favorites that you've set. So for setup we're first going to go over to setting. I suggest that you have auto reconnect or auto connect prompt on. This will, if a simple radio server is set up for it, whenever you connect to a DCS server that is running simple radio, a pop-up will come up that says, do you want to connect to the SRS? This will only happen if SRS is running but not connected. Actually, it will connect. It will do it if you're connected to another server. So I recommend you have it on. Radio receive and radio transmit effects. I enjoy them, so I turn them on. Radio encryption effects, I also enjoy uh, that, even though we don't use it in uh, CSG, so have it on. Radio switch works as push talk. Now, this depends on how you are going to run your push talk. Um, I run it differently than many people do. So essentially, many aircraft will have up to three radios. For instance, the A-10 has three radios in it. It also has on the stick a... Um, multi-function button essentially to talk on uh, each radio so uh, if you think your thumb switch on the uh, stick you push it forward you talk on your radio one you push it left you talk on radio two you pull it back and you talk on radio three if you want to set up a similar setup to that you will want the push radio switch works to push talk and you want that on and we'll go over that in a moment Enable radio voice effect. I enjoy the voice effect. It makes it sound like yours uh, actually on the radio. So I have that set on. Enable clipping effect. I set that on as well. And these radio 1, 2, 3, all the way through 10 audio channels. This, if you're using a headset or uh, if you've got something that's not mono sound, uh, you can select uh, essentially which speaker it comes out of both left and right, left or right. This is how I have mine set up. You're welcome to do it any way you want. Now let's go over to controls. You're going to want a push talk set up. Uh, for me, that's set to control and a uh, button on my uh, stick. These button are radio 1, 2, and 3 uh, modifiers included. This will select radios 1, 2, or 3 if you have this uh, bound to something. I don't, but if you wanted to set up your radio how I spoke about earlier, where you push forward, it talks on one, you push left, it talks on two, etc. If something similar, you're going to want to bind these. And essentially, you're going to want to bind these to whatever keys you want to use as a push talk. Now, additionally, um, you can not have it work as a push talk, but just have keys bound to be able to select these three radios. Some people use the numbers on their numpad, so radio one will be numpad one, radio two will be numpad two, and radio three will be numpad three. And by hitting that button, it automatically switches to make that radio active uh, to transmit on. Now, what we talked about earlier with radio switch works as push talk, if you have that on, this right here, setting these three key presses will enable that button to work as a push talk. If you don't have something set up like that, and you have uh, uh, something set up like me, where you only have one push talk button, you're going to want to select some uh, buttons to be able to change what your active radio is. For me, that's just a uh, rolling button on my HOTAS. So you want to bind select next radio or select previous radio. At one time, I had these set to the left and to the right arrow keys respectively. Uh, now I have it something on my HOTAS. By pressing this, you will change what your active radio is. And finally, your favorites tab. Uh, this is going to be favorites that are selectable on the uh, general tab, the opening screen of DCS. You would type your name in here, you would type the IP in here, you would click this add, and then you would make sure to hit save. Whatever has the flag is going to be the default. If you are a member of Carrier Strike Group 1 at this uh, time and space, the IP is 174.134.122.224, and you can save that as your favorites. Now, I've already got DCS running. If you don't have DCS running, nothing on this will really work. Now, you can connect, but uh, Simple Radio is not going to show anything. For instance, I'll connect the Simple Radio primary, or the uh, CSG1 primary, and then I'm going to hit Toggle Radio Overlay. 
this is going to show me what my radios are. Right now, they're all red, and they all say unknown. They all say no radio up here, meaning Simple Radio has no clue what's going on with DCS. And that would be because DCS isn't actually in-game right now for me. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in a multiplayer game or a single-player game. Simple Radio will start functioning as soon as you're in the cockpit and the game is unpaused and running. Hey, look at this. We've got DCS up, and the DCS is paused, and I'm not in the cockpit technically because I still have to hit fly. Now watch what happens when I hit fly, and it sinks up. If your DCS, or if your simple radio is functioning correctly, all of these will sync to whatever aircraft you're in. I'm in the F-18 Hornet, and the F-18 Hornet has two radios, two UHF radios, the ANARC 210-1 and a second ANARC 210, which is two here. Now, it's synced. It's got uh, uh, these zeros here, meaning that uh, basically the radio's off. And then a third one still says unknown. It says unknown because there is no third radio in the F-18. Uh, now, if you try to move any of these sliders around, you, nothing will happen. Like, you'll just drag the, the overlay. That's because the DCS F-18 is a uh, full Fidelity aircraft. Everything is actually modeled. So, I'm going to... I don't have my track hour set up, so I have to zoom way. Now that I have the battery on, you can see the radio is working. When I hit my push talk, it lights up and you can hear the radio click switch. And you can see the volume knots in DCS now actually affect the overlay. Now another uh, handy trick, if you don't want this thing floating around, and you can also change the transparency of this if you'd like, which I don't like to do it. And if you don't want this thing floating around, you can have a much more or much less invasive version of it in DCS, tied to DCS. For instance, I just drag this off my screen. Because I use two monitors, I can look at it my second monitor. But I also don't really like looking over to the other monitor. Uh, so what I will do is I will hit Control Shift Escape. Lo and behold, this pops up down here with mostly the same information. I don't really like this black bar though, so if I hit Control Shift Escape again, it will uh, go. The black bar will go away. Now this tells me that I'm transmitting right now because I'm holding down my push talk on this frequency on this radio, and this little star tells me that that radio is active. After pressing my key to change to my next active radio, you can see the star moved and you can see it move back. Now if I want this to go away, I just hit sh Control shift escape again. Uh, this one will now tell me now what the volume percentages are, and I'll hit it again, and it goes away. Now if you have it up with this black bar, you can actually click and drag the black bar around. I like it as far bottom left as I can. This does work in VR. And that's essentially it. Uh, now, once you've got that set up and synced, uh, your cockpit will be synced to the SRS, and you can use all your cockpit controls to change SRS.